Hi friends, I am Dr. Ashok Kumar Madhav here. This session analyzing crops and crop production is the topic for discussion. The objectives of this session is at the end of this session you should be able to define a crop, list the various classification types used in crops, side crop adaptation and distribution, define intensive cropping, enumerate the various factors affecting crop production. Dear friends, today I am I am going to introduce you to crops and crop production. Let us begin by trying to know basic definition aspects of crop. Let me ask you a question now. Introduction. Have you ever walked through a field as you enjoy this scenic of the agriculture field and the bounty it offers you? You would have also noticed different types of crops being grown on the field. There are prominently five major types of crops that are widely cultivated throughout the world. Every type of crop has its own advantage and disadvantage. The spectrum of fundamental aspects about crops and crop production will be discussed in this topic. Let us see what crop actually means. Crop. In general, a crop can be related to be an output grown and or harvested for obtaining yield. Agronomically, crop is a plant cultivated for economic purpose. Classification is done to generalize similar crop plants as a class for better understanding. There are major classifications of crops. They are based on onotonogy cycle that is the life cycle, based on economic use that is the agronomic, based on seasons let us know about each of these classifications in detail. Based on onotonogy or life cycle, crops are classified as annual crops, biennial crops and perennial crops. Annual crops are crops that complete life cycle within a season or year. They produce seed and die within the season. Example, wheat, rice, maize, mustard, etc. Binal crops have lifespan of two consecutive seasons or years. In the first year or season, these plants have purely vegetative growth, usually confined to rosity of leaves. The tap root is often fleshy and serves as a food storage organ. During the second year or season, they produce flower stalks from the crown and after producing seeds, the plants die. Example, sugar beet, beetroot, etc. Perennial crops live for three or more years. They may be seed bearing or non seed bearing. Example, napier fodder grass coconut, etc. Based on economic use or agronomic, crops are classified as cereals, millets, pulses, oil seeds, sugar crops, fiber crops, fodder, spices, medicinal herbs and beverages. Cereal is derived from word Ceres, which denotes as goddess, who was believed as the giver of grains by Romans. Cereals are the cultivated grasses grown for their edible starchy grains. Millets of small grain cereals, staple food in drier regions of the developing countries are called millets. They are also annual grasses of the group cereals. Millets are broadly classified into two. Major millets are jowa, bajra, finger millet or ragi. Minor millets are foxtail, millet, little millet, common millet, branyard millet, kodo millet. Pulses are seeds of leguminous plants used as food, that is dal, rich in protein. Pod containing grain is the economic portion. Pulses are preferred for protein rich value and also economic importance in cropping system. Some prominent pulses are Bengal gram, horse gram, lentil, 
soybean, peas, oil seeds or crops which are rich in fatty acid are cultivated for the production of vegetable oil. They are used either for edible or industrial or medicinal purposes. Some prominent oil seeds are groundnut or peanut, sesame or gingerly, sunflower, castor, rapeseed and mustard. Sugar crops are cultivated for sugar juice. Juice is extracted from stem of sugarcane used for jaggery or sugar. Number of byproducts like molasses, bagasse, press mud, etc. is obtained from sugar industry. Molasses used for alcohol and yeast formation and bagasses for paper making. Press mud used for soil amendment whereas trash green leaf plus dry foliage is used for cattle field. Fiber crops are plants that are grown for obtaining fiber. Different kinds of fiber are seed fiber, stem or bast fiber, leaf fiber, fodder or forage referred to vegetative matter, fresh or preserved, utilized as feed for animals. It includes hay, silage, pasturage and fodder. Example, grasses, guinea, grass, fodder, sorghum, fodder, maize. Spices and condiments are crop plants or their products used for flavor, taste and add color to the fresh or preserved food. Example, ginger, garlic, fenugreek, cumin, turmeric, chilies, onion, coriander, anise and asafoetida. Medicinal plants are crops used for preparation of medicines, example tobacco, mint, etc. Beverages are products of crops used for preparation of mild, agreeable and stimulating drinking, example tea, coffee, cocoa, that is the plantation crops. Based on seasons, crops are grounded as karif crops, rabi crops and summer crops. Karif crops are grown during June, July to September, October, which requires a warm, wet weather during their major period of growth and shorter day length for flowering. Example, rice, maize, castor, groundnut. Rabi crops are grown during October to November to January to February, which require cold weather for their major growth period and longer day length for flowering. Example, wheat, mustard, barley, oats, potato, Bengal gram, birsim, cabbage and cauliflower. Summer crops are grown during February to March to May to June, which requires warm dry weather for growth and longer day length for flowering. Example, black gram, green gram, sesame, cowpea, etc. Based on climatic condition, crops are classified as tropical crop, subtropical crop, temperature crop and polar crop. Tropical crop includes coconut and sugarcane. Subtropical crop includes rice and cotton. Temperate crop includes wheat and barley. Polar crop includes all pines and pasture grasses. Crop adaptation and distribution. Adaptation may be defined as any feature of an organism which has survival value under the existing condition of its habitat. Such features or feature may allow the plants to make fuller use of nutrients, water and temperature or light available or may give protection against adverse factors such as temperature extremes, harmful insects and diseases. Adaptation may be morphological or physiological. A. Morphological adaptation such as growth habit, strength of stock, radial symmetry or rhizomes and physiological adoption which results in resistance to parasites, greater ability to compete for nutrients or ability to withstand desiccation. Principles of natural distribution of plants, they are Climatic factors like light temperature, moisture, wind, etc. Edaphic factors like soil, 
parent material and physiography, dispersal of flora, plant migrations, climatic variations or change, relative distributions of land and sea and it exerts a high degree of control over distribution of flora. Biotic factors like obligate insect pollination, seed dissemination by animals and grazing by livestock directly influence the plant production. Intensive cropping. Intensive cropping is the process of growing a number of crops on the same piece of land during the given period of time. There are two methods to make intensive cropping a success. They are number one, multiple cropping, number two, intercropping. Let's know about each of them in detail. Number one, multiple cropping refers to growing two or more crops on the same field in one year. The intensification of cropping is in temporal and spatial dimensions. Double, triple and quadruple cropping refers to growing two, three and four crops respectively on the same land in a year sequence. Some prominent categories in multiple cropping are sequential cropping which involves multiple cropping may be of the following types growing two or more crops in sequence on the same field in a year. The succeeding crop is planted after the preceding crop has been harvested. The crop intensification is only in time dimension. Example rice, rice, cotton, ragi, cotton, sorghum. Relay cropping refers to planting of the succeeding crop before harvesting the preceding crop. Example, rice black gram, rice laurescens, next one rice beersim and cotton beersim where the seeds of black gram, lethyrus, lucrin, obersim and broadcasted in standing rice or cotton crop just before they are ready for harvesting. Thus, the field is never left fallow or there is no gap at all between two successive crops. Retoon cropping or retooning refers to raising a crop with the regrowth coming out of roots or stalks after harvest of the crop, although not necessarily for grain. Example sugarcane, banana, sorghum. Overlapping system of cropping involves harvesting in phases and sowing the vacated area for the next crop. For example, forage crops, part of the crop is harvested for feeding to the cattle and vacated area is sown with alternative crops like beersim or lucerne. Next is intercropping involved growing two or more crops simultaneously on the same field. The crop intensification is in both temporal and spatial dimensions. There is intercrop computation all or part of crop growth. Some prominent principles involved in intercropping are the associating crop should be complementary to the main crop. The subsidiary crop should be of a shorter duration and of faster growing habits to utilize early slow growing period of main crop. The component crops should require similar agronomic practices. Erect growing crops should be intercropped with cover crop. Erosion permitting crop should be intercropped with erosion resisting crop. The component crop should be should have different rooting pattern and depth of rooting there are three types of intercropping techniques. They are parallel cropping, companion cropping and synergistic cropping. In case of a parallel cropping, the crops are selected which have different growth habits and have a zero competition between each other and both of them express their full yield potential. Example, black gram with maize, soybean with cotton. In case of companion cropping, usually a crop that has shorter duration of growth or cultivation is cultivated along with the crops that take longer periods of growth. Example, cotton plus black gram or green gram. In case of synergistic cropping, the yield of crops grown together is found to be higher than the yield grown on unit area basis. Example, sugar cane and potato. Some prominent advantages of intercropping are 
it offers similar benefits to that from rotational cropping. The total biomass production or unit area, unit time is increased because of the fullest use of land as the inter row spaces are utilized which otherwise would have been used for weed growth. The fodder value in terms of quantity and quality becomes higher when a non-legumen is intercropped with legumen. Example, napiel plus desmanthus, sorghum plus cowpea. It provides crop yields in different times which reduces the marketing risks. It offers more employment and better utilization of laborers, machine and power throughout the year. It is an insurance against drought. Now, factors affecting crop production. There are internal and external factors affecting the crop production. Now, an internal factor refers to various genetic factors of crop that is the increase in crop yields and other desirable characteristics are related to genetic makeup of plants. This refers to the set of following high yielding ability, early maturity, resistance to lodging, drought, flood and salinity tolerance, tolerance to insect, pests and diseases, chemical composition of grains that is oil content, protein content, quality of grains that is fitness, coarseness, quality of straw, sweetness and juiciness. The above characters are less influenced by environmental factors since they are governed by genetic makeup of crop. The external factors refers to climatic, edaphic, biotic and physiographic or socio-economic. Let us go through each of external factors in detail. Let us begin with the climatic factors. Nearly 50 percent of yield is attributed to the influence of climatic factors. The following are the atmospheric weather variables which influence the crop production. That is precipitation, temperature, atmospheric humidity, solar radiation, wind velocity, atmospheric gases. Precipitation includes all water which falls from atmosphere such as rainfall, snow, hail, fog and dew. Total precipitation in amount and distribution greatly affects the choice of a cultivated species in a place. Temperature is a measure of intensity of heat energy. The range of temperature from maximum growth Water is present in the atmosphere in the form of invisible water vapor, normally known as humidity. Relative humidity is the ratio between the amount of moisture present in the air to the saturation capacity of the air at a particular temperature. From germination to harvest and even post-harvest crops are affected by solar radiation. Biomass production by photosynthetic process requires light. The basic function of wind is to carry moisture that is precipitation and heat. The moving wind not only supplies moisture and heat also supplies fresh carbon dioxide for the photosynthesis. Wind movement for 4 to 6 kilometers per hour is suitable for more crops. Oxygen is important for respiration of both plants and animals while it is released by plants during photosynthesis. Nitrogen is one of the important major plant nutrients. Atmospheric nitrogen is fixed in the soil by lightning, rainfall and fixing microbes in pulses, crops and available to the plants. Let us move to edaphic factors of soil. Plants grow in land completely depend on soil on which they grow. The soil factors that affect crop growth are soil moisture, soil air, soil temperature, soil mineral matter, soil organic matter, soil organisms, soil reactions. Let us outline prominent points about soil moisture. Water is a principal constituent of growing plant which extracts from soil. Water is essential for photosynthesis. The moisture range between field capacity and permanent 
wilting point is available to plants. Available moisture will be more in clay soil than sandy soil. Soil water helps in chemical and biological activities of a soil including mineralization. It influences the soil environment example, it moderates the soil temperature from extremes. Nutrient availability and mobility increases with increase in soil moisture content. Let us outline prominent points about soil air. Aeration of soil is absolutely essential for the absorption of water by roots. Germination is inhibited in the absence of oxygen. Oxygen is required for respiration of roots and microorganisms. Soil air is essential for nutrient availability of the soil by breaking down insoluble mineral into soluble salts. For proper decomposition of organic matter, potato, tobacco, cotton, linseed, tea and legumes need higher oxygen in soil air. Rice requires low level of oxygen can tolerate water logged absence of oxygen condition. Let us outline prominent points about soil temperature. Soil temperature affects the physical and chemical processes going on in the soil. It influences the rate of absorption of water and solutes that is the nutrients. It affects the germination of seeds and growth rate of underground portions of the crops like tapioca, sweet potato, soil temperature controls, the microbial activity and processes involved in the nutrient availability. Cold soils are not conducive for rapid growth of most of agricultural crops. Let us outline prominent points about soil mineral matter. The mineral content of soil is derived from the weathering of rocks and minerals. These are the sources of plant nutrients example calcium, magnesium, iron, potassium, etc. Let us outline prominent points about soil organic matter. Soil organic matter supplies all the major minor and micronutrients to crops. It improves the texture of the soil. Next, it increases the water holding capacity of the soil. It is a source of food for most microorganisms. Organic acids released during decomposition of organic matter enables mineralization process, thus realizing unbelievable plant nutrients. Now, soil structure, horizon leaf, litter, organic material, a horizon plow zone rich in organic matter, B horizon zone of accumulation, C horizon withering soil little organic or material or life, R horizon unweathered prairie material. Let us outline prominent points about soil organisms. The raw organic matter in the soil is decomposed by different microorganisms which in turn releases the plant nutrients. Atmospheric nitrogen is used by microbes in the soil and is available to crop plants through symbiotic and that means ribosome or non-symbiotic or esophilirium association. Outline prominent points about soil reaction. Soil reaction is the pH that is the hydrogen ion concentration of the soil. Soil pH affects crop growth and neutral soils with pH 7.0 are best for growth of most of the crops. Soils may be acidic that is less than 7.0, neutral is equal to 7.0, saline and alkaline less than 7.0. Soils with low pH are injurious to plants due to high toxicity. Low pH also interferes with availability of other plant nutrients. Let us move to biotic factors of soil. Biotic factors are beneficial and harmful effects caused by other biological organisms, plants and animals on the crop plants. Let us take up plants and animals and understand biotic factors influence on them. Number one, plants that is competitive and complementary nature among field crops when grown together. Competition between plants 
occurs when there is a demand for nutrients, moisture and sunlight, particularly when they are in short supply or when plants are closely spaced. When different crops of cereals and leguments are grown together, mutual benefit results in higher yield, that is the synergistic effect, competition between weed and crop plants as parasites example. Striga parasitic weed on sugarcane crop. Number two, animals, soil, fauna like protozoa, neumatidode, snails and insects help in organic matter decomposition while using organic matter for their living. Insects and nematodes cause damage to crop yield and considered as harmful organisms. Honey bees and wasps help in cross-pollination and increases yield and considered as beneficial organisms. Burrowing earthworm facilitates aeration and drainage of the soil as ingestion of organic and mineral matter by earthworm results in constant mixing of these materials in the soil. Large animals cause damage to crop plants by grazing, that is cattle, goats, etc. Physiographic factors of soil. Typography is the nature of surface earth, leveled or slopy is known as topography. Topographic factors affect the crop growth indirectly. Altitude. Increase in altitude causes a decrease in temperature and increase in precipitation and wind velocity, hills and plains, steepness of slope. It results in turn runoff of rainwater and loss of nutrient rich top soil, exposure to light and wind, a mountain slope exposed to intensity of light and strong dry winds may result in poor crop yields and interior packages. Let us move to socio-economic factors of soil. Society inclination to farming and members available for cultivation. Appropriate choice of crops by human beings to satisfy the food and fodder requirement of farm household. Breeding varieties by human invention for increased yield or pest and disease resistance. The economic condition of the farmers greatly decides the input or resource mobilizing ability that is marginal, small, medium and large farmers. Now, conclusion. In this session, we discussed about the fundamentals, classification, adaptation and distribution of crops. We also discussed about the crop production, intensive cropping and analyzed the factors that affect the crop production. In general, a crop can be related to an output grown and or harvested for obtaining yield. Agronomically, crop is a plant cultivated for economic purpose. Crop production is a complex business requiring many skills such as biology, agronomy, mechanics and marketing and covering variety of operations throughout the year. By understanding the crops and its production methodologies, we got to know that cultivating good quality crops and minimizing the ill effects on crops is essential. Producing good quality crops helps in earning revenue to the farmer and the country as a whole. Thank you very much, my dear friends.